We Got This Africa is an April Communications production with support from Kaiser. Proudly brought to you by Frytol. Frytol, you deserve a life of goodness. <laughs> Girl, listen. We got this. Do you remember the days when you and your partner alone would lie in bed and watch TV all day, lazy about, you know, take a shower and come back and watch more TV? Well, those are the thoughts that many couples have after having children when you no longer have your bed to yourself, you can no longer sleep through the night, and you can basically no longer do anything by yourself. Today on We Got This Africa, we're talking about how marriages change when babies come along and what we can do to continue to have a blissful marriage or a blissful relationship after the babies come. My name is Na Ashoko. You're welcome to our show. We Got This. To have a hearty, healthy family. Frytol Sunflower Cooking Oil. Also cholesterol free for tasty, healthy meals. Love your food, love your life. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. Thank you for staying tuned. Today on We Got This Africa, we're going to be talking about the many changes that childbirth and childbearing brings to our marriages and our relationships. Abna yes. and Rose, thank you so much for joining me. Okay. How long have you been married for? Six years. Six years? Three years. Three years. So you're still honeymooning? <laughs> <laughs> Ish. Ish. Not really. Not really? Why? Three years after marriage, you still should be chilling, no? No, 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 no. No? Why aren't you chilling? So much pressure after the children. Arrive. How many children do you have? Three. You have three? Yes. You've been married for three years? Yes. Okay, wait. When did your first baby come? Um, that was um, 2018. Okay. How long after you were married? Um, three months after. So the marriage. first year of your marriage, yes. you had a baby? Yes. Ah. I was seven months pregnant when I had my wedding. Okay. So you, you're, you were seven months pregnant and then you got married. Yes. And so three months later, a baby came. Baby came. So you've had babies throughout your marriage? Yes. And when did the second one come? Um, that was 2019. The next year? <laughs> and the third one? <laughs> when did the third baby come? 2021. 2021. Yeah. So in 2020, you had some breathing space. Six months. Congrats. Thank you. How is he? He's fine. He's doing well. Yeah. Wow. So you've had babies throughout. Throughout. So you started marriage as a parent. Yes. How has it been for you? Hmm. <laughs> it's been nice and also very hectic. Very stressful. Yes. Because when the babies come along, all eyes on the baby. Yeah. Do you have time with, like, and alone with your husband? Not really all eyes on the baby. Even if you have someone helping, it gets better a bit. But in my case, I'm alone. You don't have help? No. Is it by choice? Yes. You want to take care of the babies by yourself? Yes. So do you have a day job or are you a full-time stay-at-home mom? I, for now, I'm a full-time stay-at-home mom. Okay. How is it? It's cool, but not really cool. What's your day like when you wake up in the morning? When I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is 
arrange for the, uh, the two to go to school. So they take their bath, get them breakfast, then they set off for school. And then I go for the six months baby, bath him, feed him, and then put him to sleep. After that, I come back to also take my bath, get something to eat, then I move to maybe washing or the days I don't have anything to wash. I go ahead, do some cooking, clean the house, and then by the time I finish doing all those things, it, it, um, the other two school time is up. I have to go and pick them. So I rush off to go and pick them, bring them home, bath them, get them something to eat. If they have homework, I help them do it, and then they play around, get a bed, and go to bed. So the whole day is children? Yes. How about you? <laughs> What's your day like? Same here. You have to wake up at dawn. What time do you wake up? 3.30. 3.30 a.m.? Yes. Why? Because um, my second born needs some special attention. Okay. So he is allergic to so many things. So I need to prepare his foods. That's different kinds of foods so that he can take it to school. He doesn't eat school food, so I have to wake up at 3.30, prepare them, they'll go to school, then I'll return. When I come back, I've started my small business, so I have to do it and then start the marketing. So in the evening, it comes around 4.30, so I'll make sure I'll be in the house and prepare their supper. But when they close from school, I'll help them with their homeworks. After the homework, then I'll, I'll feed them with their evening food. Then I'll bath them again, then they'll go to bed. So with these things, it's very stressful for me. Let me say, I'm now bouncing back. At first, it was very tedious. You get tired because of the second born, especially with his knees. It hasn't been easy. It hasn't been easy. But then I've tried and then he's now picking up a bit. Looking at someone who doesn't eat your food, he eats this and then because he's allergic to something, the next he has to be in the hospital, he will be reacting to so many things. But my, in fact, my whole life has been within the three years, let me say three years, it hasn't been easy. Having that child has been very stressful. It has changed everything in my marriage. Now in the evening, when he's not sleeping, daddy has to pick him up, walk for a while, before you cuddle him for some time. You see, the way he will be crying, I think he needs something and he can't say it. But How old is he now? Now he is three. Okay. So the crying at dawn is reducing. Okay. Yes, let me say it's, it's reducing. We've been able to manage to know the things that yeah, he needs. So he's okay now, but not all that okay. But it's good than previous. So you don't have time for yourself. Let me say, for the past three years, <laughs> I don't think I've been out until just recently. My husband will be like, oh, you, you need to get some time. You have, you have to take time for yourself. You have to do this. But then... It's, it's by grace because everything, the houses, it, it changes. Everything changes in the house. At first, you'll be in the house with your husband alone when you got married at first. Your privacy, now you don't have that privacy again anymore. Why don't you have privacy? Now the kids are there and then you need to channel all your attention to them, especially the second one. You can't say you have to get time for yourself whilst that child is in need of something. So we, we've been able to manage that thing. You see, like I was saying previously, our whole life has been, for the past three years, you have to be in the hospital running for this, getting this medication, making sure the child gets what he needs. So these three years hasn't been easy, but then it's good. Oh, it's very tedious, but, but it's good. It has been good. What do you miss about your life before the children came? <laughs> 
having fun alone with my husband. Seriously. What would you do normally? <laughs> um, you see, when, 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 you, when you have to, honest, let me be honest. When you want to have sex, you can have it anywhere. For the one it was the two of us, you can have it anywhere. Now the children determines where you, you, you have that. Unlike previously, you can have it in the morning, in, at the sitting room, anywhere that you want because you know it's the two of you. But now, mm -mm, you don't have that privacy again. You have to, the children now determine the time because you have to make sure everything is in order for them before. So we, I don't have that thing, that privilege anymore. But uh, it's all good. It's all good? You mean that? Do you mean that? <laughs> it's, it's, Do you really mean that? <laughs> it's, 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 it's all good. It's all good. Uh, what will I say? What do you miss about you know, spending time with your husband before the children came? Taking a shower together. Um, asking him to carry me. Oh. <laughs> Even eating together. We don't do that anymore. Why can't you eat together? By the time the food is ready, this one is hungry and cannot feed himself or herself. So you have to sit by him or her, feed him or her. And your husband is also hungry. He's not going to wait for you. Okay. He's not going to wait for you to finish feeding them and then come and join him. So he will say, please, give me my food. Well, Let's you can't eat. all eat together. Like, I mean, if it's something you, you know, want. Some, some, some of the food, the kids can't have it. Yeah, so. Okay. If it is something we can all eat together, we That's do. That's fine, okay. But why can't you shower together? Why can't he still carry you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> By the time he comes home and you, you are like, oh, hello, darling, welcome. Please carry me, put me on your back. And <laughs> you, you that you are asking him to carry you, you are having someone on your back. <laughs> so how is he going to carry you? Okay. So that's how it is. Some of these things you guys are sharing, are they things that you expected before... Yeah. You know, the babies came. Did you know? Did, is, is this something you discussed with your husband? Like, look, we're about to have these babies, and when they come in, this and that is going to change? Or did it come as a shock to you? Were you expecting it? No, I wasn't expecting it. It came as a shock. It came as a shock yes, to you? Yes. You didn't think about no, it? No, 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 no. And so recently I realized that, no, honestly, I got it all wrong because... At first, he would come, you, both of you, you return from work and he will hug you. Hello, he will hug you. But now, it's no more. Why can't you with, do with, that? With, 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 with a peg, and then it's no more. Because I think he feels the kids are there. He will come and meet them. When they are not asleep, he will meet them, yes. And then, you can't do that. You see, now, culture, you can't do this. You can't do what? As in... You, you, you give your wife a peg or something. Like, that is me. That's what I'm thinking. Stop thinking yeah. like that. But the thing is, he can do it, right? Yes. But he feels maybe he doesn't want to do it in front of the kids. Yes. And anyway, her having also tried on him. Well, yes. I don't think there's anything wrong with hugging your wife in front of your children. Mm. Do you hug your children? Yes, I do. Yeah, so very, very if, well. you, if you can hug your children, then mommy can hug that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that should be a problem. <laughs> but it, 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 I, I would understand if you say that, Charlie, because when he comes home, like, this person is calling you here, this person is calling you there, you now you are tired already from a long day of taking care of the children because from my experience, if, even if all you do all day is just watch the kids, you will be so exhausted by 9 p.m. that you would have been if you were out working. Like just hanging out with it. When I hang out with my kids, you better not call me or text me because I, I, I won't even mind you. Like my, I cannot because it's very stressful. Even when they are being good and they are not doing their normal display here and there. No. Even when they are being good. You, you can't take naps when they are awake because you have to keep your eyes on them. You know, you have to feed them, bathe them, this, that, 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 that. By the time you're done, in fact, before you realize it, it's 5 p.m. and the day is gone. So I know how stressful it is. I have two sons. <laughs> so I know how stressful it is. So I can understand it by the time your husband comes home. You work from home, right? Yeah. And you are stay at home, mom. Yeah. So perhaps by the time your husband comes home, you are already tired and, you know, you don't even have time for all that. 
But if that's not the case, I think Mammy can hug Daddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah? You, you guys don't hug and kiss anymore. Oh, we do. Okay. Even sometimes my little girl will be like, Daddy, kiss Mommy. Okay. <laughs> and then I also say, Daddy, kiss her. Okay. Yeah, daddy kisses her. So okay. That, that one is cool. Yeah, you that can one. do it. <laughs> that one is cool. But did you know that the babies will change things like this? Not at all. I didn't know. I had no idea. So these days, uh, I've been having this conversation with my younger sister. I've been telling her, please look, if you think, if you really want to get married and have kids, please sit down and plan. Plan well because it's not easy. It's not easy. So what's the hardest thing for you? What was your when plan was for your life? Like, if, like the grand scheme of things. What was the plan? At this age, what did you think you'd be doing that you aren't doing now because the babies came? I had wanted to um, own my own business at this time of my life. And because of babies, I, I don't even think of it anymore. You don't think of it anymore? No, because I don't know how I'm going to start with it, with the babies. How old are you? I'm 30. Oh, you're so young. You shouldn't say that. You can do it. You shouldn't say that. Uh, sometimes I say, I say to myself, okay, maybe when they grow up a bit and they can do things on their own, they can take their own bath, they can at least make their, their own meals, they can go to school on their own, and maybe at that time I can also have some time for myself. That's and like how old? Seven and eight? That is like um, 12, 13. You want to wait 12 years <laughs> before you start your business? That's how I see. No. You have a, your own business. Yes. How, how do you manage? Yes, that's why I said she can do it because with all this stress, that made me start my business. So you can do it. After sending them to school, then I will come and do my packaging. Yes. So now I started, I didn't start on the market straight away. I use social media. So you order, then you have it. If you see it online and you want it, what do you then sell? peanut butter. Okay. I'll, I have some. So I'll give some peanut peanuts. butter. Yes, please. Okay. Yes. So now I started with small, just small from the house. Yes. But now it's becoming bigger because I would say that it's through my son that made me started my own business because I realized I was in the house. Yes, and then I'm not doing anything. All my focus is on my son. So why can't I start something that will also generate me some income? So I started with it and now he's in school. So the moment I finish with them and they are gone, then I'll come and do my packaging and then start. Okay. So you can't, you can't start at, at a goal, although you start gradually. And then I use the social media to do it, like I said, and it's moving. So my sister can do it. Okay. Yes. What business do you want to start? To oh, I'm um, selling baby diapers. So and that's something you can definitely do. Yeah, and it, it was uh, my sisters, they are outside Ghana. So they so ship it in. Yeah. That, well, that's something that you can definitely plan. do. Don't let go of that. T tell me about the plan for your life. When you thought about your life and your marriage, your life with your husband, you know, at this point in your life, what, what was the plan and how different is it from what you currently have? Um, I, I wanted that, as in, we all want to go far, as in, in the marriage. But then we knew definitely kids will, might happen, like kids will come out from it. So, we, we plan to move with them all the time, as in whatever we do, they are into consideration. But we never thought of, as in we are, um, we are taking them back or we want to... Uh, Have a life without them. Yes. So, they've always been in a plan that definitely we might have kids. Yeah. Yes. So, whatever we do, we consider them. And then now it has happened. So they are in our plans now. And like I said, we are bouncing back to normal. Mm -hmm. Yes. It wasn't like previously that 
we were stressed and then like I, I, I honestly it came to a time I was depressed because the challenge was too much you've given up you've given birth to a, a, a child and all of a sudden something happened you don't have any hands to ask someone to help you are in there with your husband with the kids alone it has been serious but it's it's all good that's what i say I, i'm saying that we plan with them as in we plan that definitely we, we have children so we move by them so it's okay you when i say it's good it says it's <laughs> but it's okay yes it's okay you can manage did yes. you plan for your children no 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 i didn't why didn't you plan after the first one um I was told to go for um, family planning. Contraception. Yes. yes. And my husband said no. Why? He said, no, 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 no. I hear that and it's bad. No. So don't go for it. And so I was just there and then boom, yeah. another one is in. That one came and my auntie, she's a midwife. She said, please. The last time I told you to go for it, you didn't. And this one is in. This time, go for it. My husband said, do it again. <laughs> so have you, have, you, have you done family planning now? <laughs> <laughs> or still no? Still no. <laughs> okay. So no, 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 no. No are one is going to arrive to, again. <laughs> are you looking forward to another baby? Not at all. But if you don't want um, traditional, if you don't want actual contraception, there are ways of preventing pregnancy. Yeah, so now You're that's trying. what I'm doing. Okay. That's what I'm doing. You want baby number four? Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Charlie, it's not easy. I know that the struggles with contraception because, it, you know, I was reading this post recently. We said, so, like, you, you go for a contraception appointment. They ask you, do you want depression or another baby? <laughs> because what contraception does, really, is it gives you all these hormones that... I mean, if you go for hormonal contraception, that mm -hmm. can give you an entire personality change because you know how, what hormones does. And I, I'm, I'm not a medical person, but we all know how, I mean, even when you're on your period and you're so hormonal, see how frantic you get. And then you go and put in, you know, contraception that comes with additional hormones. It can just make you this other person that you yeah. might not. So sometimes I understand when people don't want contraception, but then there's not hormonal contraception. You know, that there are different kinds of contraceptives. There's, there's non-hormonal IUDs, there's their condoms, there are all other ways that you can prevent pregnancy. So we beg you. <laughs> okay. You're watching We Got This Africa. And we're talking about how our children have changed our lives somewhat. Just stay tuned. Have a hearty, healthy family. Phytol Sunflower Cooking Oil. Also cholesterol free for tasty, healthy meals. Love your food, love your life. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. Kaiser Intelligent System is that magical experience in our lapel range. And it's got a TFT touch control system in this extractor. An induction hot plate with a tempered glass surface powered by the world premium Shot Siran shock resistant and it comes with its grill plates every space of this induction hob can cook and we call it the freezo just touch to control the extractor fan speed the power slide on the induction hob gives you the freedom to regulate its power to your desire magically powerful 
in extracting heat, smoke, and harmful odors without being a noisy nuisance in your cooking space. And because we care, the induction hob has a safety guard and child lock function. Now, look at that food. Kaiser knows how to bring the best in every cook. Kaiser. Power in action. And we're back. Rose, tell me, what would you do differently if you had a clean slate? You, you're just married, you and your husband, no babies yet. What would you do? First of all, I would enjoy my marriage for about two or three years. Okay. And then also put some plans ahead in the lane before having children. What kind of plans? Plans for their kids, how to be able to still go ahead and do my activities whilst having their children. So you do your business, you run your business. Yes. I'll, and make sure I'll put up my business before okay. thinking of babies. Okay. How about you, Abna? Would you do anything differently? No, I'll, I'll, yes, we'll plan for three years. Let me say three years before thinking about children. So I would have set up the business all right by then and then enjoy. Honestly, I'll have all the fun because I didn't have that and then I'm not having it now too. So I, I, will, I will enjoy before and then I'll make sure I'll plan very well because I know when the case ends it, definitely things might change. You wouldn't know, that's the thing. <laughs> you, would, you wouldn't know. You would never know. So I was married for about three years before I had children. Yeah, I was married for three years before I had children. And when we decided to have children, we were like, oh, let's just have one child. And, you know. But now we have two. And it's, it's stressful. But sometimes I, I'm just... You know, that's something I think, hmm, I wish I had my kids when I was like 20-something. So by now, I'm 33 now, right? So by now, they'll be old and, you know, we'll be chilling. But then there are also times when I'm actually glad I didn't have them so early. Because I, I think that, you know, when you get married at first, you need to figure each other out first. Yeah. Right? <laughs> to figure each other out first. But when the baby's coming so early, you don't have time to figure each other out. And then the baby's coming and now you're having to figure that child out and you probably could even forget about each other. Yes. And that's tough. Yeah. I didn't do that at all because um, three months after my baby was in. Three months. And whilst that baby was six months, another pregnancy. So as for me, oh, I've not enjoyed married. I've not had any time with my husband. Not at all. Do you have any regrets? Well, I do have regrets, but it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be because I had kids, because the kids are not to be blamed. It, it's my own mistakes, and so I shouldn't regret because they are in. They are not to be blamed. But a good thing is they make you happy, right? Yeah, they do. Yeah. Sometimes I scream. Oh, they'll make me scream. And my neighbor will come from her house and come and say, Oh, madam, please take it easy on the children. I know it's not easy. You are trying. In fact, you are the best mom in the world. Oh. But please calm down, okay? <laughs> That's sweet. <laughs> do you sometimes have regrets? If you could do it again, you do it the same way. Yeah. <laughs> well, that makes me happy to hear. I'm really happy to hear that. And how about your husband? Do they feel the same way? Yes. Yes, for my husband. Yes. I would say yes because <laughs> he also feels now that the kids are in, he's not getting what he used to get previously. So now we are planning very well. Honestly, okay. yes, we are planning very Are you going well. to have more children? <laughs> we, we haven't thought about that yet, but let me say for now, the two is okay. But maybe, but not now. If in the future? Yes, in the future. She doesn't want more children. 
I don't want more. But I feel like she has three, so it's okay. yeah. Okay, you have two. two yeah. So three. What is three? Three is a cool number of children to have nowadays, right? No, but we can have more. <laughs> you want more? Me, yeah, I don't have. That's why I said the two. It's okay for now. <laughs> I don't know whether one, but then I'm planning very well. Okay. Yes. I don't want, even if I want three, th the third one, it's not now. Mm. Yes, it's not now. Do you find that they're expensive to have? I think they're expensive to have. I mean, sometimes I look at school fees and I'm like, what? <laughs> Forget about school fees. From diapers to wipes to yes. infant formula mm. to infant cereals to hospital bills to clothes that you wear only for two months. And do you... Do, do, does the financial bedding of having children affect your marriage? Yes, it does. It does. Especially when you, the mom, is not working and the expenses is all on the husband. It really does. It's expensive. Yes. How about you? Yeah, it's very, very expensive. Very, very expensive. Do you find that you argue about money for the children? Well, if you have a, a good partner and... A partner who understands you, you wouldn't argue. Okay. Um, well, and some people may not be lucky to have a good partner like I do. We have never argued over money over their children. Okay. Do you, are you able to do the things, like, like cool things for yourself, like get your hair done, buy pretty things for yourself? I to use myself as an example. Every time I want to spend money, on myself, I think about it, rethink it, and wonder if I should be spending this money on myself. But that same amount of money, yeah, I'll just be driving down the road and see this children's shop. I won't think twice. Yeah. I'll go right in and then shop more for the children that I, that I even would have for myself with that money. Yeah. Like, I never, I never hesitate when it comes to them. Do you feel the same way? Yes, yeah. the same. Are you able to spend on yourself? No, not at all. When was the last time you bought yourself something nice? Oh, no. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember the last time I bought myself something nice. Oh, it's all, all thoughts on the children. All towards the children? Yeah. I don't remember. When was the last time you bought yourself something nice? Mm -hmm. I can't remember. But then when I'm out buying for them, then I'll see one or two things that, oh, this dress is okay for me. But to think that I'm going to buy this thing, I, want, I need this thing, so I have to get it. No. The moment it comes into my, like, I think about it. I said, no, the kids are there. I have to get this for them. No, if I get this for Kujo, it's okay. If you have this, I think it's okay. So everything, all my thoughts are on them. Yeah. So I was Do you buy things for your husband? Yes. You buy things for your husband? Not anymore. Not anymore. No. You used to. I used to. Why don't you anymore? Because I don't go out anymore. So when the children go to school, can't you step out a bit, like for an hour? My third baby. You is have a still... third baby. Yeah. So if you have to go out, that's a whole ceremony. Packing yes. bag. That that diaper bag. <laughs> Does anyone else think it's stressful packing a diaper bag? It's really stressful. If you forget one, one thing, thing. <laughs> it's one of the most stressful things. <laughs> oh, it was one of the most stressful things for me. Packing a diaper bag. You pack the diaper, the wipes, the clothes, the food, the bib, change of clothes, water, extra food, breast pump if you need it, um, uh, whatever mats for the di to put the changing baby on, mats. changing mats, the polythene bags to put dirty yeah. diapers in. If you forget one thing, you're in trouble. you'll be frustrated the whole time you're out. So yeah, I get it. When, I had a, when my babies were fresh, going out was not fun for me. First of all, I couldn't find any dress that would fit. Like suddenly, all your clothes don't fit. And you can't still be going out in the things you were wearing when you were pregnant because then that's maternity and you just look fat. Yeah. And people will ask you the most ridiculous questions and they'll be greeting you with, hey, why I kiss you? Like that, that's the new good morning. So I didn't want to wear those clothes. And it was difficult to find something else that would fit. And I said, I had to pack the diaper bag. I was always in black. You know how they expect you to wear white whites when you have babies? Yeah. No. I was always in black because you're going to get dirty. Oh, yes. Definitely going to get dirty. So my favorite color was black. I used to wear black leggings and black t-shirts. That was my uniform. On a good day, I had a black blazer. <laughs> I said that black, black, black. 
So yeah, I get it. Like when your baby is six months, your baby is not walking yet. Yeah, the last thing you want to do is go about town shopping for your husband. Yeah, that doesn't sound right, does it? <laughs> so how would you advise young moms coming up? Um, you have, you have li younger sisters, right? Yeah. The advice I, I give to my one. younger sisters all the time is have money. I always tell them, <laughs> have money. Yeah. I'm not saying get rich. I am not rich. I'm hoping to be rich. So I, 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 it doesn't lie in my mouth to tell anyone to get rich. But have money yes. before you have children. So before you get married, because it's expensive, and if you don't have money, one of the, the, the most, uh, the, the commonest triggers for postpartum depression is the absence of, you know, income or money. Yeah. If you don't have money, yeah. it will drive you to depression so fast, yes. and it will even sink your marriage. A, a, lot of, a lot of marriages suffer because there's no money and there are children. Yeah. There's no money and there are children. You fight about it. You argue about it. The things that you want to prioritize, you can't because there isn't enough money. So that's, that's one advice I always give to my younger sisters and like, younger girls. Before you have children, have money. I'm not saying have a job. Yeah, have a job. I'm not saying have an income. Yeah, have an income. But outside of the income that's coming in, make sure you have money. Otherwise, you won't know what hits you. Before you realize, you're always fighting with your wife, always fighting with your husband. The children upset you, you'll be shouting at a baby. Why are you shouting at the baby? Have money. Anyway, <laughs> so that's my advice. How do you advise younger women? It's the same thing I've been telling my sister <laughs> every day. Okay. Please work hard, save, and plan. That's all. Work hard, save, and plan. Yes. When you say plan, you mean like space out the children or plan for their arrival? Plan for the arrival and also space them out. Space them out. Yeah. Like, what's the ideal for you now when you think about it? Well, in my case, I can't say go for family planning, but... <laughs> <laughs> She's whispering. Okay. How do you advise younger women? Yes, um, they should plan very well. Plan? Yes, plan very well. When we say plan, what do we mean exactly? They, what should they do? They should plan before giving birth, when they, when they get married. Because if you don't plan, let's assume you are going out and then boom, you said that you are pregnant. Then you trap the man with the pregnancy, he will marry you at the end, probably you don't have anything. You didn't plan very well. Now he's, you are married and then the child is out. How do you, why are you getting the money to bring up the child? Now he, he, uh, he's feeding, and anything that you, the diaper, even the diaper alone, it costs a lot. The diaper yeah, alone. Yeah, diapers are expensive. Yes. So you have to plan very well before you enter into the marriage. And then when you enter into the marriage, you plan ahead of the children. How long should you wait before you have your first child? <laughs> For me, if I have the chance to go back two years after marriage. Two years? Yes. No matter how old you are. Or if yes. you're in your 20s, two years. If you're in your 30s. Three months. No, no, no. If, 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 you are, if you are in 20s, <laughs> you can give yourself five years. Five years. Yes, so probably by 25, you can start having children. But, but people don't get married at 20 nowadays, so. Mm, no, so like maybe 24, 25, 26. Yeah. So if you, are, if you are less than 26, yeah. five years, so you'll be about 28, 29, okay. that's okay. fine. Yeah. If you get married in your 30s? Two years. Two years. Yeah. So 32. So okay. 40s. For 40, that means you've already planned, so boom, you can boom. go. Yes. She said boom. Start before yes. you get married. married. I don't think um, you should get into the marriage and wait for some years before. If you really plan well before the marriage, you can go ahead and have children right after marriage. Hmm. Okay. That is if you really plan well before your marriage. Why don't and, we plan, And the though? planning also should involve your working. Because I was working when I got married and had my first child. I was still working. But because of the child, I lost my job. How because did you lose I your had job? To, I had to go to work with her. And waking up with her, take, bathing her, taking her to work was a lot of 
responsibilities, so I was always late at work, and that was. That's like, how you lost your job. Yeah. Sorry about that. It's okay. Sorry about that. So if you are working, you should also include that in your plans. That okay, I'm working. I'm going to get married. I'm going to have kids. And after having the child, you will continue working. How are you going to manage that? All those should involve in your plans. How, in, in the ideal world, I mean, I don't know how this really should work because all, all, of us, all of us here cannot speak to it. But if you have a nine to five, how are you going to manage? When I had my first child, I had a nine to five. I had a lot of help. I had a lot of help. I have my sisters who are all, like, they always have my back. They always take the children. I also have friends who help me. Like, I have a great support system. So I've got my friends. I've got my sisters. And when I had my first child, I had my mother-in-law. So I had people to rely on. And I had a 9 to 5 at the time. So, you know, I had to go to work and close at 5 p.m. And it was a struggle. So, and I was breastfeeding too. So I'll go to work with my breast pump, I'll go into the toilet and pump breast milk and throw it away and come back to my desk, you know, until I go home. Like, that was my routine. I arrive at work, after four hours, I have to pump. So I go into the bathroom, plug my pump, sit down there, sometimes 30 minutes, 45 minutes in the toilet, pumping breast milk. And then I throw it away and then come back to my desk. After a while, I just couldn't. Like, it just, it just wasn't working. And I haven't had a nine to five since. But... If you have a nine to five, you had a nine to five when your first child came. Yes. You had a nine to five. Yes. Is it in, in our in our society now, is it possible to be able to have a job like that in hindsight and still have your Mine children? It was not even nine to five, it was eight. Eight to five. Yes. It was eight. Is eight. it is it possible to be able to have a job like that and have your children? It's possible if you have that is why I'm saying it should you should involve it in your planning if you do plan and also get help, help along the way you can still go ahead and do that do you have help no i don't i don't have any help that's too much yeah it's really too much it's really how are you so cool and chill and your skin is so flawless <laughs> like how aren't you it's good it's good if God doesn't give you the strength, you won't be able to do it. You can't. When you say it's God, what does it mean? Like, can that be my plan? That, you know, it's God? God gives me the strength and the wisdom to go about it. That's, that's my... Because honestly, you look very far from stressed. I mean, your skin is... Your, your skin... <laughs> Your skin looks so good. That's I mean, you're always smiling. <laughs> and, and if you have a... You're so chilled. If you have a, um, a partner who understands you, it also helps. Yeah. You have a great Sometimes husband. he comes home and there are some things you were supposed to do, you haven't done them. And instead of him yelling at you, he's like, oh, I understand. He's supposed to yell at you. Yeah. Some, some people would do. Some people would do. Well, they shouldn't. Some people will be really like, you, you sit at home the whole day doing nothing, only taking care of children and look at the house. You are not able to, you, you couldn't even cook for me. But for him, if I say, please, today I wasn't able to cook. He say, okay, it's fine. I'll buy food when I'm coming. So that also helps. It's good to have a system that works. Yeah, it's good to have a system that, that works. And did you have a nine to five before your kids came? No. Not at all. Mm -hmm. So you've always been a businesswoman. <laughs> I just that's it. So so before you had babies you were a stay at home yes. um, housewife. Yes. You know, that's been my dream job for some time now. Like being a housewife. <laughs> it used to be my dream job. Being a housewife. I don't know if I still have that dream. You don't have it. I shouldn't have it's it. Not good. Why yeah. what's wrong with being a housewife? You get tired of it. What, what, like, what's your routine as a housewife? <laughs> you, you do everything in the house, but then it's as, normal, it's as normal okay to me to be a housewife. You didn't realize no, you were no, a housewife? No, 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 no. Because I was searching for a job and then I you was... You hadn't gotten one yet. That's not yes. a housewife. 
Yes. A housewife so is when is you decide really that you know be, what. Yes. And I think it's a very noble, it's a very noble job, yes. especially when you're raising children. You decide to be a stay-at-home mom. I doff my heart to all moms who decide that you know what I'm going to stay at home to raise my children because raising children in our world today is hard. Yes. Really hard. Especially if you want to, you know, do other things. By the time you come back home, someone else is raising your child mm -hmm. in a way that you don't even recognize. You know, your children will be saying things that will shock you. Yeah. Be doing things that will shock you. Yeah. And nowadays, people, house helps. Hmm. I don't have to tell you. <laughs> so, for moms who are able to say, you know what, this is what I'm going to do. I really, really respect them because it's not something that I can do. And so when I see people doing it, I'm, I'm almost jealous. Like, wow. That's very, like, brave, you know. So, so, so shouts to you. Shouts to you for being able to do this all these years. And I hope that you are able to start your business before your children turn 12. <laughs> before your children turn 12. I'll do that, so, I'll do that when, while, um, immediately the baby, the last one, goes to school. Yeah. Good. So when he goes to school, you have some time on your yeah. hands. Don't, don't fill that up that space with laundry or something else. Mm? I would do that. Because you know when you're at home, there's a tendency of wanting to clean up all the time. Yeah. So you always want to do, you always want to wash. <laughs> you always want to clean this. You always want to clean that. Sometimes you can leave it. The laundry can wait till Saturday <laughs> so that you can also do some things for yourself. Because before you know it, you know, you know there's this song, um, I hope you dance. There's a line in there which says, who wants to look back on their years and wonder where the years have gone? Because these are the best years of our lives. Yeah. These years right now are the best years of our lives. And so we must do the things that we want to do now. Because waiting for later, when is later really? Tomorrow never comes. Today is the best opportunity we have to live our best lives. Something's got to give. You're watching We Got This Africa. Do stay tuned. To have a hearty, healthy family. Phytol Sunflower Cooking Oil. Also cholesterol free for tasty, healthy meals. Love your food, love your life. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. Thank you for staying. We're talking about the great things and <laughs> the great changes that our babies have brought to our lives. And um, just before we, we, we wrap up, let's talk about the good stuff, okay? Um, some of the changes have been rough. But what are the good changes that these babies have brought into your marriage? Hmm. Um, looking at them and Seeing that, oh, okay, so now I am responsible for someone to um, um, being, I mean, I'm responsible, I'm um, taking care of this person, or even I brought this person into this world. And your children are it's so a, beautiful. Oh, joy. <laughs> You've seen her children. <laughs> They're so cute. <laughs> it's a whole joy. Sometimes, when we and when the other is coming home and he opens the gate, 
a lot of people open the gate and our gate when you open it makes noise a little bit noise a lot of people come in they open it and they wouldn't say anything but as soon as their daddy opens the gate they know that it's their they daddy know. and they will start screaming daddy 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 oh. that alone is a whole joy makes you happy yeah <laughs> how about you yes um they've really changed my life especially the first one after school mommy then she would just hug me mommy so the younger one too is learning from her then they'll hug you let's say you go out you return they'll work they will welcome you as if they, you sat them down and then you, you, you've taught them how to do it so they've brought me joy let me say that now when you go home you know that you have a company unlike previously you were there alone with the admin. so they brought me joy let me say that and then they makes me happy too they keeps my company they keep you company very very well <laughs> very do you very have conversations with them yes how old I is your oldest five years <laughs> what do you talk about <laughs> she would just come up with questions and within three seconds she wants you to answer everything <laughs> boom mommy this mommy yeah, that mommy yeah, this yeah. mommy that. that but then i realized okay that is how she she is and then at her age that's what she's so, curious yes so i'm happy i i i uh, in fact i have them so I think <laughs> my son's I'm favorite word is why <laughs> <laughs> everything why why and sometimes i just ignore him because it gets so much why mommy why why and when i don't respond he starts calling me mommy now shoko <laughs> mommy now shoko i said why <laughs> so i know what you mean when you say they have so many questions the god the questions don't end, but sometimes when, when they are not around, those are the things I think about. I was like, ah, by this time, they would have been asking me two million whys. Mommy, what's that? They were here yesterday, and you know these pebbles in here? They were much more than this. Now, I don't know where the rest are. They kept picking them up and throwing them about, so I, I just let them be. But yeah, it's stressful to have them, but they also are, oh my goodness, they are a good source of joy yes. and, you know, I'm, I'm happy I have children. I wouldn't have had it any other way. No, I wouldn't have had it any other way. You know what they say, even right after labor, when you've had a whole drama, when you see that child, you everything just, everything. you know, it, it feels like it's totally worth it. Because it is. Anyway, Abna and Rose, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you too. And thank you for sharing with us. I hope that you've learned something from our conversation today. Maybe you can relate. Maybe you can't. All of our stories are different. But hey, that's what life is about. That's what motherhood is. Thank you for watching our show today. This has been the changes babies bring into your marriage episode of We Got This Africa. My name is Nashako. Till we meet again, cheers and bye. Life is full of places. Sometimes you go. After today's conversation with Abna and Rose, I'm thinking that, you know, we deserve a life of goodness as moms. It's very easy to get, you know, so sucked up into trying to provide the very best of everyone, for everyone and you forget about yourself, you know. Sometimes after you have children, you don't even spend as much time in the bathroom as you ordinarily would have. First of all, you can't because while you're in there, everyone is trying to call you mommy, mommy and come out and come out. So you're in a hurry to take a shower, you're in a hurry to eat your food, you're in a hurry to dress up, you don't even brush your hair right. <laughs> so please, as moms, while we try to be the very best for everyone, we need to take care of ourselves too. We need to take some time out to take care of ourselves. And sometimes, you know, when we say you need to pamper yourself, people think that, oh, we think that we need to go and get some expensive spa day or go out of town but sometimes it's the little things you know just take a longer shower wash your hair buy a nice dress or get your nails done if you can or go for a prayer meeting or whatever makes you feel like yourself every now and again you should do it because you deserve a life of goodness sometimes it might mean sleeping in and asking someone to help you with the kids or it, it might mean just watching your favorite TV show or turning off your phone for an hour. 
just so you can have some me time. Do it because you deserve a life of goodness. While you try to be the very best for everyone else, how about you try to be the best of yourself for yourself for a change? We got this. Can you say, oh, ban your way? Make it no worry. We will say, okay, we will be all right. No, in your me, go to Chima. In your me, ban your face. In your me, go to Kanya. Can you say, oh, ban your face? In your me, go to Chima. In your me, ban your face. We Got This Africa is an April Communications production with support from Kaiser. Proudly brought to you by Frytol. Frytol, you deserve a life of goodness.